Hey traders, this is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group and today is Tuesday, June 29th. So I wanted to do a quick video on something that I talk a lot about and my end of day videos as well as, as look at during the day in the Tribeca Trade Group trading room and I make comments on it um, during the day and that's market breadth. So Mark, what market breadth does is, is it looks at the overall strength or weakness of an index or the overall market. So we break this down in terms of advancing versus declining names. So um, this is important because it really kind of gives you a sense of how the market is moving um, and whether or not there's a lot of participation in the market or there's weak participation in the market. And I think it really helps to kind of break things down in terms of what this means in terms of, you know, what it translates to you and how you're trading. So I didn't mention this, but of course, this video is for information purposes only. I'm not giving out any advice or recommendations here. This is just for education purposes only. So let's take a couple examples. Now, before we get into some of the tools that you could use, such as uh, you could look at an advanced decline line, you could look at the McClellan summation index, which we're going to get into, but that's kind of step two in this. So on a very basic level, right, if we look at today's numbers, right, in the top three, uh, the top three uh, categories or, or rows is what I'm going to focus on here. You've got the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. So, of course, in the Dow, you've got 30 names, right? And uh, today we had 18 declining names. We had 12 advancing. So this was similar, I think, to yesterday. Yesterday we had, I think, 20 names that were declining and 10 names that were advancing. Today in the S&P, you had 274 and you had 228. So a lot more declining names there. And same thing with the NASDAQ. You had 1,848 names that were declining and you had 1,038. So this could be you know, known as um, weak breath, even though that the Qs were up on the day and the S&P was just a little bit over uh, positive for the day, it was just up five basis points. The, the Qs were up 35 basis points. But let's talk about this in terms of, of you know, uh, realistic type of, of trading situation, right? And you have to make us, uh, some assumptions. Let's assume that when we take th that this example that I'm gonna that I'm going to um, put together, let's assume that you're an average trader, right? I know everybody thinks that they're a better than average trader, otherwise they wouldn't be trading or doing this for a living. But let's just make the assumption that you're that you are an average trader, right? And or you're picking stocks randomly. So let's go back to to what the breath was yesterday in the Dow, right? So there was 20 names that were uh, declining and let's assume that there was 10 names just for round number purposes that were advancing. So let's put this in perspective of your portfolio. Let's say that you had that you have 10 names that you're holding, right? If you use this type of statistics to say, you know, what the average breadth was, now, of course, it, it, you know, those 10 names are, are you know, going to be specific, but on average, if the overall market does that, you could say something like that you had about you know, six names that were declining on the day and uh, you know, four names that were advancing, or it's probably about, with that math, it's about 6.6. .6. So 6.6 .6 out of 10 were advancing, uh, you know, 3.4 3 were I'm sorry, 6.6 .6 were, were declining and 3.4 were advancing. So what does that mean? Is that, a, is that an easy market or is that a more difficult market? Well, I, I think from this example, it kind of proves that it's, it's, a, it's a harder market to be a stock picker in. Right? So that's why we're always kind of measuring market breadth to look at what it's telling us is that if you're owning more than one name, right? If you're owning a portfolio of names, it's a much harder market to be in when you've got declining breath going on, right? And you could use that in your in your judgment about what you're doing. Now, keep in mind, breath is this is not a predictive measure. It's just basically telling you what's going on currently, right? So it's a, it's a coincidence indicator. It's not even really an indicator. It's just giving you a read on what the market is doing. But if you believe in trends, you can kind of take a, you could take a look at, at advancing versus declining. And you, you could basically say it could kind of help you with risk. Um, another way that, you know, another couple examples, because I'm 
doing a video just on this specifically, so I might as well give you a couple other uh, examples or analogies. But it, it's also what you probably heard some traders refer to as, you know, whether you're going with the wind or going against the wind, right? So when you have more advancing names than you have declining, it's an easier market environment, right? You're, you're running with the wind. The wind is at your back. It's a lot easier to run that way versus in your face, right? It's the same thing too. I was thinking about this too in terms of football. I always, you'll, you'll normally find me put together analogies for football or baseball because those are, those are my two of my favorite sports. But think about this in terms of a quarterback, right? If you're, if you're a good quarterback, and you go on the field and you're playing against a really good defense, right? So that's, you know, that's the predicament. Do you want to be playing when you've got really good conditions, when, when they're clear, the weather's about 70 degrees, no rain, no precipitation? Do you want to be trying to, you know, use your skills to in that environment if you had a chance to pick or would you rather be playing the defense when it's snowing out it's raining you can't see um so that's so for me i i would say you would want to be you know passing when when you've got the, the you know the optimal conditions on the field that's the way i would look at market breadth too so when we look at this and we say okay for the day we've got some really strong breath you know of course we don't know if that's going to carry throughout the session but in that current environment you've got it could you could you could formulate an opinion on how strong the market is for that day right now if you want to take it a step further you could look at things like this, right? So if I bring up on stock charts NYSI, which is the NYSE McClellan summation index, right? And you could just basically put a moving average on this, right? So here's, or you don't have to use a moving average, but sometimes people like to look at crossovers. But this black line, it, when this is going up, you're, you're in a positive environment, right? Where, where the wind is at your back. And when it's declining, as it is now, um, it's the opposite, right? So the, the, you're in a more difficult environment. So that's kind of where we've been. So I know that some people have been noticing this the last couple of weeks is that the breath has not really been strong as the market is going higher. Now, we're, I don't really want to get too much into, you know, if there's a big divergence here, you know, we could talk a little bit about that. I like to use the advanced decline line um, for NICE and NASDAQ for that. Now, one of the things that you see here is that, well, we don't have a breakdown here, but when you look at the S&P and you see it breaking out, right, it's not doing exactly the same thing. Is it a warning signal? No, I, I would, you know, I, the, and again, this is my interpretation. I would say it's not a warning signal unless you really see breath start to trail down, right, and break this channel. But that's my own interpretation. Other technical analysis may use something else. Uh, I also like to look at the advanced decline line for, uh, for NASDAQ as well. Right, just to see what that is telling us too, because again, depends on what type of market you're trading. Um, you know, if you're trading more Nasdaq names or if you're trading more um, New York Stock Exchange names, which also includes ADRs in there too. But you could see that this isn't exactly breaking out too. And if you look at the raw numbers that we just went over, when you've got a lot more declining names, that's why this is not breaking out either. Okay, so. Um, that should give you a perspective. Now, we talked about if you're an average stock picker, what that means, right? Now, of course, you, you can make adjustments to kind of, um, you know, get away from a little bit uh, this environment, right? One of the things that I try to do when I notice that we've got a trend going on where there, there's, there's bad breath or, or weak breath as what we've been seeing over the last week, um, it's to try to lighten up positions, right? And not to go, you know, full on risk on in terms of my risk taking when, when we have that. Uh, again, the translation is it's just a more difficult environment, right? Your skills have to be better and better when you're facing a market that has a lot more declining issues than it does advancing. Now, again, keep in mind, this could flip at any moment, but you have to kind of just realize what it's telling you. And especially, you know, more so too, when you kind of see it for the last, you know, the trend three or four days of this, you know, the, the, in my opinion, the more that you can sit on your hands, you know, or, you know, try to day trade a little bit more um, versus, 
you know, holding more, more risk considering this environment. All right, so that's it. I kept the video just about 10 minutes long. But um, you'll again, you'll see me quote this, um, you know, as a barometer of like what the day did along with the performance, because it's very important to know, okay, just because the market, you know, was up, let's say a half a percent, well, was the good participation? Was it just a few names that led the rally? Or was it more of a, of a broad uh, participation where it was a little bit easier to pick stocks that day? Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.